Hey everybody, I uh, <clears throat> just wanted to do another video today and um, this video is actually um, in place of a book that I started writing back in 2017. Um, I just have so many projects going on. Um, I do have a second book uh, that I'm working on. It's going to take a little while that is going to be testimonies, like the stories of what we have seen God do in our ministry, which really picks up where the little book that I just wrote, uh, 11 to 7, which should be any day now, I'm hanging in there, uh, should be showing up at my door for the initial first print. Um, but anyhow, this book is uh, that I uh, was working on was titled Standing Your Ground. And it's about contention in a Christian's life and how we are to combat it and how we can come to understand um, why it happens and uh, basically what we should do in the midst of it. So, and what it's designed for and, and everything. So just let me get into this. So no matter how uh, long you've been a Christian or how deep or how far into ministry you have gotten into, you are most likely facing what I call contention. Whether it's Sunday morning, getting ready to go to church with the kids being crazy or the car not starting or um, your hair dryer not working, whatever it is, uh, to frontline ministries where people are um, being denied passports, um, not just denied passports, but going through struggles, lost suit suitcases, uh, mind attacks, attacks in the mind, uh, whatever it is, before we head into some sort of encounter with Jesus or ministry or leading others into encounters. I call it contention. Shane and I experienced it very early on when we started going to church. Um, I experienced it long before Shane was in my life uh, in 2009 where I would um, be asked to give my testimony somewhere and the, uh, oh, whatever, the car wouldn't start, I'd get a flat tire on my way there. And uh, one day I remember this story, I was on my way to church on a Sunday morning and the car, uh, I ran over a piece of steel, had a flat tire, changed my tire, went to pick my girlfriend up, um, picked her up. We argued the whole way to church, uh, crazy stuff. And I remember um, getting out of the vehicle in the church parking lot and saying, screw you, Satan. Huh? You think you're funny? Well, come to church with me, as if that was going to stop him. I was on the soundboard that day, and... Um, I got there and, and we started doing worship and I'll never forget that microphones were feeding back. Uh, the guitar lead um, was went bad. Uh, there was all kinds of crazy stuff. And even when uh, the pastor uh, got up and started to talk in between the one uh, songs, things were just not lights. There was a light that went out and um, I called him back to me. And I said, hey man, um, I was got, had some stuff that was going crazy earlier, flat tire and all this. And then um, out in the parking lot, I was like, oh yeah, Satan, why don't you come to church? I think I invited him here. And he's like, oh, don't ever do that. You know what I mean? So uh, I was young and I was stupid. Fast forward to Shane and I, we would be heading to church. We would argue on the way to church or uh, we would be there to pick somebody up to go to church and uh, the one day we picked a guy up he came out and literally uh, he must have just put his bottle of whiskey down from the night before um, he was drunk and smelled like whiskey and was talking nonsense we still took him to church we thought it was funny to see how the church would handle a drunk guy coming in um, but you know these kind of things so before I'm going to skip out of church because it's just not with church. So what I face today, I remember going into West Virginia and um, 
spirit of fear on me. I know my health wasn't the best at the time. And as I'm driving by myself for like six and a half hours to get there, um, right before I was ready to drop down to like no man's land where the uh, cell service was going to go away, I remember having just this deep fear. Like if something were to happen to me, like, man, like, I, I don't know how I'm going to do this. And uh, I got a hold of my wife, uh, Shana, and I said, um, I don't know, man. I, uh, I got a bunch of fear, but I got to go. I got to do this. You know, I got to go in there. And uh, while I was there, I remember the Lord using me, um, you know, speaking through me to uh, call out a, a spirit of self-hate and suicide and to set this woman free. Uh, Jesus set her free, but used me to do it. And uh, it was at that time, and then I, I stayed uh, at, a, at a place there, and there was a flood, the roads were flooded, we got out of there uh, where we were speaking and back up to the pastor's house where I was speaking in the, um, you know, the house for the stinking uh, church. I can't even think of it right now because it's not even important. Uh, but I was staying there and I was, was talking to him and I remember the Lord uh, doing some ministry that night with his wife and him and I. And I was thinking as I was driving home, I was like, man, you know, how crazy would it have been if I would have turned around in the face of that fear? Uh, would they have still gotten free? Um, you know, what is it? And, and it really started to stir things up about contention, uh, how the Lord contends uh, or how the devil contends for ground that the Lord is going to take from, from Satan and how he uses us and how, how the devil contends is he messes with the messengers. He messes, messes with the vessels that God's going to use and God allows him to do that. One, because we are not called to be in fear and we cannot operate in fear. We, we have to step out in faith. So God wants to show uh, Satan that his people are the real deal. Now, do we always pass? Of course we don't. There's times Shane and I turned around and just didn't go to church. Um, there are times for ministry that I believe um, early on in the ministry before I was wise to this scheme. Uh, that I was like, yeah, I just don't have a good feeling, this and that, and I didn't go, and I felt later that the Lord was like, that wasn't me telling you not to go. So, which really stirred me to start writing this in 2017. And I may still release the book, but I'm telling you with the times that they are today, the times uh, the way they are today, uh, I really felt necessary to put this on a video. Now, this isn't going to be your typical 8 to 10 minute video. This is going to be a teaching video. Um, it's going to be basically a summary of some of the notes that I have. It's not going to be uh, all inclusive. But contention is biblical. <clears throat> I started to, to, to jump into the New Testament. And uh, it's still in the Old Testament, but I wanted to go right to where Jesus was. Because one thing that, that goes uh, on and on and on in the Gospels, we're just going to basically stay there with the exception of the Apostle Paul uh, when I go to how we can go against contention, how we fight against this contention. Um, because it's at the beginning and at the end of our ministry. It never fails that before Jesus was about to do a miracle or something, um, somebody would show up. Some bozo would show up and contend before that miracle. He would, oh, if you think, if you're the Son of Man, what are you doing here, Son of Man, and this and that, or, oh, teacher, if you think you're a teacher, and then Jesus would have to deal with that situation. Then we read that a miracle would be done. And then afterwards, someone would be pissed that he did the miracle and they would try to ar uh, arrest arrest him or they would question him why why were you healing on the sabbath huh you know and i believe the lord does that to show his glory and and to strengthen us and and if we pay attention to this where i've come to do where i've come 
in in my current state right now, what I've come to see is the more contention beforehand, usually the more fruit. And then the more fruit, usually the greater the contention at the end to try to steal it back, to try to say, really, did that happen? Um, how it works in my life usually is uh, the enemy has been using distractions beforehand. You know, showing me all the broken pieces other than what I'm supposed to be doing. And then afterwards, he attacks my brain. He'll either attack my mind of pride. He'll attack my mind with crazy thoughts, sexual thoughts that aren't even my own. Um, he will attack me with anger and brokenness about my marriage or about my kids. He'll attack me in ways uh, that will get me to not celebrate what God did. So he'll, he'll bring me away. Now, why does God allow me to do that? Or why does God allow him to do that to me? I believe uh, that the Lord uses contention to keep us humble, especially at the backside of fruit. How easy would it be uh, to go up to um, Port Allegheny, be a part of literally 12 baptisms and uh, three deliverances and see all that. And for me to drive home and say, wow, look how special I am. And I saw that and this, this worked and stuff. It'd be very easy for any of us. When God uses us, it's a supernatural move in the spirit that we can't do on our own. But when we're a part of it, the enemy always likes to tell us, Ooh, look how good you are. Look how special you are. Excuse me, or look what you've done. So, of course, the Lord will allow him to do that, to keep us humble. And beforehand, the devil just doesn't want us to show up because the best way to lose is to quit or to not show up for the game, right? So you're probably saying, this is a great talk. This is kind of stupid. Uh, show me in scripture. Well, of course, Jesus was baptized, right? And we know what happens there. It says that he was impelled or led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by Satan. Well, that is a good contention of two things. It's a contention of, okay, do you believe that you are my son? Is this? I mean, Jesus knew that, but it was the solidification of the words that Jesus was spoken over by the Father, that he is his son and, and he is uh, well pleased, right, with the son. Like, you are. It was an affirmation. And then the contention is, Jesus comes out of that and he says, repent for the kingdom is near. So it's the contention, if Satan could have beat him there, then Jesus uh, would have had probably way more issues uh, going into the ministry that he was going into. And his ministry was to reconcile mankind to the Father while destroying the works of Satan. That's what he did. So... Um, so you're saying, okay, I get that, I know that, everything that you're saying I can relate to, absolutely crazy. So how do we deal with this contention? Well, the first example I'm going to use is the temptation of Jesus. And the temptation of Jesus, Jesus uses scripture, the word of God. So it's, I'm just going to read that. It's Matthew 4. Uh, from the beginning, verses 1 through 11. It says, Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And after he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, and then he became hungry. And it says, And the tempter came and said to him, If you are the Son of God, command these stones become bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Fasting is very important. Right now, I am at the end of a 24-hour fast because yesterday I was getting my butt kicked and I was not winning. Satan was busting my butt. So, so Jesus says, so he fasts, right? One, to get his flesh weak. 
but to be strong in the spirit. And that's why we fast. We fast to deny the flesh. The best way to kill something is to starve it, right? Starving it, fasting, fasting the flesh, because the flesh is always weak. Our flesh does not want to do what God wants it to do. Second of all was the Word of God. He uses the Word of God, and he continues to use the Word of God. It says, Then the devil took him into the holy city and had him stand on the pinnacle of the temple and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you. And on their hands they will bear you up, so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. Jesus said to him, on the other hand, it is written, you shall not put the Lord your God to the test. So he's using scripture to combat these contentions of Satan, these temptations of Satan. Contention and temptation is the same thing. Uh, contention is before a ministry attempt. See, temptation can happen anytime. But if you know you are heading to church, or you know you are going to do ministry, or you know um, you are going to do deliverance or anything, if you know something is on your schedule and temptations are happening, it is the devil trying to keep you from that calendar thing, whatever it is on your date. I'm telling you, it is almost 100% foolproof that there will be contention. It happens to me all the time. It probably happens to you. And in this case, Satan was trying to stop Jesus before he went and wrecked the kingdom of darkness. And, and Jesus uses, right, the word of God and fasting. So that's two ways we can handle the contention. I could continue to go on, and I am going to go on because there's an important uh, sentence at the end of this. It says again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all of the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to him, all these things I will give you if you fall down and worship me. Then Jesus said to him, go Satan, for it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Here's the important part. Then the devil left him and behold, angels came and began to minister to him. Now, uh, I thought it was... Um, the other scripture that I was reading, but it says until a more opportune time, until another opportune time. So those opportune times, I believe, are when he is moving to advance the kingdom of God, just like us. And uh, it's kind of crazy. I'm just going to read something to you um, about contention. I'm just going to read. This is a lot of scripture, but I want you to pay attention to it. Uh, Matthew 15 there are a few things that happen here. Um, Matthew 15 and 16 is what, it's the beginning of Matthew 15. It's, it's all of Matthew 15 and the beginning of 16. It's a perfect example of what I'm talking about. Uh, beginning of Matthew 15, I'm not going to read all these chapters, um, but I am going to read this. The beginning of 15 it begins like this. It says, Then some Pharisees and scribes came to Jesus from Jerusalem and said, Why do your disciples break the tradition of the elders? For they do not wash their hands when they eat bread. Right? Right away, trying to catch him in a bunch of garbage. He goes on to rebuke them. And he gives them parables. He does a little teaching moment from that. He uses his contention as a teaching moment, as I am doing right now for you in my life and this this is what it's about and it says uh in verse 21 he says it says jesus went away from there and withdrew into the district of tyre and sidon immediately it says and a canaanite woman uh from that region came out and began crying out saying have mercy on me lord son of david my son or my daughter is cruelly demon possessed but he did not answer her. He goes on and he talks about um, the he he talks about uh, the children of God of Israel have to be dealt with first. But then she shows a great move of faith. Her daughter is healed. Then he goes keeps going. He goes along into the Sea of Galilee, goes up on a mountain, and he starts healing all of them. It says, and the crowds came to him, bringing them 
those bringing, yeah, with them, those that were uh, lame, crippled, blind, mute, and many others, and they laid him, and they laid them down at his feet, and he healed them. And then he goes on and feeds those people. So immediately, there's all kinds of ministry. So beforehand, they complained to him in the beginning of 15 about how he's just he's not obeying the elders and the commandments. He goes and does all this, heals the woman's daughter, uh, heals the whole crowd, feeds all of them next. And then he gets in his boat to roll out. And it says in the beginning of 16, the Pharisees and Sadducees came up and testing Jesus. They asked him to show them a sign from heaven. So immediately, so before the ministry and after the ministry, very, very prominent. It's a very easy sign of um, contention both ways. And Jesus deals with them the way it is. Fair, uh, he uh, deals with parables and teaching the word of God through prayer. He gets a way to pray. Sometimes contention needs to be dealt with with just pure grit. So prayer fasting, the Word of God is always dealt with. But sometimes, after prayer and fasting, and sometimes declaring the Word of God over your, over your position, the enemy is still contending. So that absolutely is a case in Acts chapter 14 and 15. Um... It's pretty crazy. Uh, so this is where Paul uh, is going in to, to do some preaching. He goes before the council. Um, and I think I got the wrong stinking one here. No, this isn't the right one. Um, yeah, it's actually 14 is where he's at. This is where they beat him to death, almost to death, right? Uh, let me find it here. I should have marked it. But I didn't mark it. And therefore, um, dee, 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 dee. all right. Um, here we go. All right. So beforehand, he's preaching, and they begin calling him uh, like a god. This is in, in 14, in uh, yeah, Iconium. And he enters the synagogue. And it says, when the crowd saw what Paul had done, they had raised their voice, saying in the Lyconian or Lysanian or whatever uh, language, the gods have become like men and have come down to us. And they began calling Barnabas, Zeus, and Paul Hermes because he was the chief speaker. The priest of Zeus, whose temple was just outside the city, brought oxen and garlands to the gate and wanted to offer sacrifice with the crowds right so so he, he does ministry um beforehand he has contention he does this ministry and now all of a sudden uh at the end uh, of that story he he says no it why i'll just read it verse 15 sorry guys this is just on the fly it says in saying men why are you doing these things we are also men and of the same nature as you and preach the gospel to you that you should turn from these vain things to a living God who made the sea and the earth or who made the heaven and the earth and the sea and all that is in them in the generations going by he permitted all the nations to go their own ways and yet he did not leave himself without witness in that he did good and gave you rains from heaven and fruitful seasons satisfying our hearts with food and gladness even saying these things with difficulty they restrain the, the crowds and offer offering sacrifice to them but jews came from antioch and iconium and having won over the crowds they stoned paul and dragged him out of the city supposed supposing him to be dead so in this huge ministry where people thought he was a god it went from there to stoning him to almost dead. And here's what Paul does. It says, But when the disciples stood around him, he got up and entered the city. The next day he went away with Barnabas to Derbe. After they had preached the gospel to the city, to that city, and had made 
many disciples, they returned to Lystra and Iconium and to Antioch, strengthening the souls of the disciples, encouraging them to continue in the faith and saying, through many tribulations, we must enter the kingdom of God. Verses, uh, that's chapter 14. Just read chapter 14. So, through many trials and tribulations, we must enter the kingdom of God. We will be contended with. It's not going to be easy, but I will tell you, here's what I've learned to do. This is how I'm going to finish this video. This is not my typical video. It's it, You may think it's jumping around and stuff, but the whole point of this is this. You will face contention. Every single place I go, I talk to the people. I warn the people. You know, you will probably have some rough stuff going the week before. You will probably have some stuff going the week after. Somebody who comes to Christ, I'm going to say, man, it was difficult to get here. How did you know? They lead them, I lead them to Christ. They receive Christ. They're born again, not on my behalf or their behalf, but the Lord does a great movement. And immediately afterwards, they have a crappy week because the devil wants to steal them back. See, the sovereign God has Satan on a leash, so he cannot destroy us. If he, if he wasn't on a leash, why would he let me go to these places where a dozen, a dozen people get baptized and people get led to the Lord and uh, marriages get reconciled and families are healed? Family relationships are healed. Why would he let us do that? If he, was, if he, if he is true to his nature, a murderer and a liar, why would he allow us to do that? Well, because Jesus only gives him so much permission. Job, the story of Job, Satan has to ask permission. Jesus says to Peter and the disciples that Satan has asked permission to sift them. Even in the story of the uh, demoniac, they ask, it says, well, it, they want to go into the pigs because they don't want to have to leave the, the, the city. And it says that Jesus gave them permission to enter the pigs. So if Jesus has to give them in, uh, has to give them permission to enter dirty, stinky pigs, how much more does he have to give permission to allow them to torment and come after you? So it's God that allows this contention so that we rise up in our fasting, that we rise up in our scripture knowledge and scripture reading and declaring the promises of God over what is about to take place, over our lives, over the lives of the people we are going to minister to, over the church service. Even if it's for the church service, if your kids are acting up, rebuke those little sinners. Well, rebuke the demons that are trying to contend, but press through, get to church. Lift up the name of the Lord when you get to church. Actually, sing along to worship. Don't sit there on your phone for Facebook. Right? Press through. And then afterwards, when your husband is arguing with you, or your wife's arguing with you, or the kids are saying that they wanted to go get pizza when you took them for something else, just know that it's the devil trying to steal what you have gained in ground at church. For those who are in ministry... When you see contention leading up to it, don't cancel the event. Seek the Lord. Say, Lord, is this you or is this contention? Or is this some kind of demonic attack? And 99% of the time, he's allowing the enemy to try to shake you so that you press into him, that you go into that ministry fully in his strength. And then when you see the fruit and when things get crazy, and you see God move and all that ground is taken from Satan, know that you'll be tired and things are going to, uh, you know, settle down, you know, it within you, then the enemy is going to contend to steal that ground back or to make it look like it wasn't really real. So we got to stand strong, guys. We have to stand our ground. We have to fast. We have to know scripture. We have to be in prayer. And we have to just grit through things. Sometimes we have to get stoned almost to death by other people. Not stoned from marijuana or weed, but stoned or beaten up physically during those ministry times. But have no fear. The Lord who holds us up will see to it 
that we are raised or are raised up from our beaten uh, beaten places, and we are ready for the next contention leading into the next move that God is using us for. If that isn't enough, I don't know what is. But I had many, 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 many more examples written uh, in my notebook for this book. But it should be pretty uh, evident by the end of this what I'm talking about and how to come at it. So guys, I just want to thank you for listening. If you can relate, please, in the comments, give me an example of some contention you faced and how you faced it. It's not me just teaching you. It's all of us walking out our faith together as a family, as the family of God, as the body of Christ. So if you can contribute anything to this, I encourage you to do it. Thank you for your half hour of time. I hope this helped you in some way. Uh, Be blessed, stand strong, stand your ground, and take back uh, the ground from the enemy. Take, uh, Take ground for the kingdom of God and continue to do so. All right, guys, thanks again. Thanks for uh, watching this video and subscribe to The Painted Soldier. All right, be blessed.